Unfortunately, sometimes athletes let the fame and fortune go to their heads, resulting in arrests which tend to occur every single year across almost every league. This year specifically saw a ton of NFL players get into some trouble, including two cornerbacks who actually turned themselves in after an armed robbery. Some scary stuff. Let me know what other videos you guys want to see on the channel in the comments down below and smash that like button. But for now, let's count down the top five athletes arrested in 2020. Starting us off at number five, we got Antonio Brown. What a year this guy's had. It was actually heading into the NFL season that the allegations against him came to light, and it seems that was just the start. Well, the helmet and the foot freezing thing was probably the start, but that's besides the point here, guys. While he was suspended from the NFL and missed the investigation regarding his former trainer's allegations, AB would still make headlines. Logan Paul actually challenged him to a fight, and it seemed like it was going to happen, then it didn't. Prior to this, on January 21st, Brown and his trainer, Glenn Holt, allegedly got into a bit of a scuffle with a moving truck driver. As in, like, guys that move your furniture. <laughs> Reports claim the incident happened in front of Brown's house and it's believed Brown threw a rock at the truck and then assaulted the driver following a dispute over payment. At the time, cops arrested Holt, but Brown locked himself in his house. AB would eventually turn himself into the authorities and would be facing charges of burglary with assault or battery, burglary of an unoccupied conveyance and criminal mischief with a total bond of $100,000. When all was said and done, Brown would spend a night or two in the slammer, paid the 100k, and was given a handful of stipulations upon release, which included wearing a GPS to track him, surrendering his passport and firearms, as well as not having contact with the victim. In July, he would accept the sentence without admitting guilt, leading to Brown receiving two years probation, 100 hours of community service, undergo a mandatory psychiatric evaluation, and attend a 13-week anger management program as part of his plea deal. Now on to number 4 we got Julian Edelman. The star wideout just hasn't been the same since Tom left New England and it's really starting to show. I mean really the Patriots as a whole haven't been the same but that's also besides the point. Edelman here has had his fair share of issues in the past as well with a PED suspension just a few years back and now an arrest stemming from a misdemeanor vandalism charge. You'd think all those years of partying with Gronk after winning those Super Bowls, Julian would be able to handle his liquor but I guess we were all wrong. On January 11th, the 33-year-old receiver was arrested after jumping on the hood of a car, damaging it. Sources claim he was visibly drunk and a photo from earlier in the night appears to confirm that, showing Edelman posing with Paul Pierce and Danny Amendola outside of Beverly Hills restaurant. On to number 3 we got John Jones. Bones here as we like to call him has had his fair share of run-ins with the law over the last few years. In 2012 he got a DWI after smashing his Bentley into a pole in New York. In 2015 he was involved in a felony hit and run where he hit a pregnant woman's car and took off. Then in 2016, while on probation for his hit and run, Jones was given five tickets, including one for drag racing. Fast forward to July 2019, and he's still getting himself into trouble, being charged with battery after he allegedly assaulted a cocktail waitress at a strip club. Reports claim that he slapped her in the, you know, like her area, and also put her in a chokehold. Jones would end up taking a plea deal in October of 2019, however it seems 2020 would end up with Jones in cuffs once again. In March of 2020, Jones was arrested in the early morning after being suspected of driving while intoxicated. An officer pulled Jones over after hearing reports of a gun going off in the area around 1am. Reports claim that the officer found an open bottle of alcohol in the car, a quote, green leafy substance on his shirt and pants consistent with marijuana, and a strong odor of alcohol coming from his facial area. The reports claim Jones also performed poorly on three field sobriety tests, and his breathalyzer test showed he was, I quote, at or above twice the legal limit. This guy really just doesn't learn. There was also a handgun found under his seat, and when all was said and done, he would be arrested for aggravated DWI, negligent use of a firearm, possession of an open container, and no proof of insurance in the vehicle. Jones avoided jail time once again and agreed to one year of supervised probation. With his sights now set on taking on the heavyweight division, hopefully he could stay out of trouble and keep focused. But I guess we gotta just wait and see. At number two, Odell Beckham Jr. OBJ technically wasn't arrested as he wasn't thrown in jail, but at one point there was a warrant out for his arrest, so I felt him being on this list was warranted. Huh? Haha? <laughs> Following LSU's championship game on January 13th, 2020, Odell was seen celebrating with the team handing out cash, which in itself was a bit of an issue. However, it seems the bigger issue occurred after he slapped a security guard's ass in the locker room, likely out of excitement. Following the misdemeanor battery, which is what they were trying to charge him with, a warrant for OBJ's arrest was sent out. Shortly after, it was recalled with Beckham's lawyer, Daniel DeViller, explaining, I quote, the arrest warrant stemming from the post-game locker room celebration at the Superdome on January 13th, 2020, has been recalled. There is no warrant outstanding for the arrest of Odell Beckham Jr. The security officer involved does not wish to pursue charges in this matter. This legal matter has been resolved. Seems like he dodged a bullet there, but as we know, Odell would still have himself a shitty year. 
If you know, you know. And in at number one, we got Conor McGregor. Although we saw Conor's incredible return to the Octagon in January against Cowboy, which of course got everyone talking, it seems that wouldn't be the only time he'd be making headlines. It's no secret that Conor's had his fair share of legal issues in the past as well, most notably throwing a steel dolly through a UFC bus, smashing a fan's phone in Miami Beach, and of course punching the old gentleman in the bar in April of 2019. It seems old habits die hard as he was arrested in September of 2020 near France. More specifically, McGregor and his wife were sailing around the Mediterranean on their yacht, and at some point they must have docked up because Connor was arrested on allegations of attempted sexual assault and indecent exposure. Prosecutors in France explained, I quote, following a complaint filed on September 10th denouncing acts that could be described as attempted sexual assault and sexual exhibition, Mr. Connor Anthony McGregor was the subject of a hearing by the Gendarmerie Services, and McGregor's representatives went on to say, I quote, Connor McGregor vigorously denies any accusations of misconduct. He has been interviewed and released. And uh, let me go back to that Jenna Marie thing I said. I definitely said it wrong, guys. I looked up how to say it. I just forgot, so we're just gonna roll with it, okay? McGregor's manager, Adi Attar, also told MMA Fighting, I quote, I am irate and putting out a warning loud and clear. Conor McGregor is not and will not be a target for those seeking to score a headline or a payday. Turns out nothing ever came from that one, so maybe someone was just trying to get a little chingo chingo. Now before we wrap this one up, I do want to mention those two cornerbacks arrested for armed robbery. When all was said and done, they wouldn't be charged, but headlines first circulated accusing former New York Giants cornerback DeAndre Baker, who now plays for the Chiefs, and current Seahawks quarterback Quinton Dunbar of an armed robbery. The charges stemmed from a fight that broke out at a cookout in May, which allegedly led to an armed robbery. There was insufficient evidence to prosecute Dunbar, and although it seemed Baker was potentially facing up to 10 years in jail, his charges were eventually dropped as well after the witnesses accusing him of the crime became uncooperative. Now that's all for this one guys, let me know your thoughts in the video in the comments down below and what else you guys want to see on the channel. I want to wish you all a very happy and healthy new year. I've been your host Jared Bronstein and I'll see you guys soon.